The True Face of Israel Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant has announced a complete siege of all of Gaza in response to the Hamas attack on Saturday, justifying the deliberate targeting of civilians with siege warfare by the claim that Israel is at war with human animals. I have ordered a complete siege on the Gaza Strip. There will be no electricity, no food, no fuel. Everything is closed, Gallant said Monday, adding, We are fighting human animals, and we are acting accordingly. So there you have it, folks. They're attacking civilians, which is fine, because they're not actually attacking human beings. There it is. The true face of Israel, naked and unadorned in the cold light of day. The mask is completely off now. Israel apologists get mad at me for criticizing Israel when Israeli officials are saying much worse things with their own mouths about what Israel is than I ever have. A lot of evidence has come out casting doubt on the Wall Street Journal claim that Iran coordinated the Hamas attack along with Hezbollah. Moon of Alabama has a nice write-up of the glaring plot holes in the story, including the former employer of its main reporter saying he fired her from Reuters in 2008 because she has a history of dishonesty and inventing stories. Israel has also said it has no evidence Iran was involved. Suspicions that the Saturday attack was allowed to happen have been given more weight by an Associated Press report which cites an anonymous Egyptian intelligence official saying Egypt had warned Israel something big was in the works in advance of the attacks. We have warned them an explosion of the situation is coming, and very soon it would be big. But they underestimated such warnings, the official said. Multiple U.S. officials have deleted tweets calling for ceasefire negotiations to end the conflict. Secretary of State Tony Blinken and the Twitter account for the U.S. Office of Palestinian Affairs both removed posts from the platform, the former calling for ceasefire mediation from Turkey and the latter urging all sides to refrain from violence and retaliatory attacks. The exact reasons for the deletion are unknown, but the general reasons are politically obvious. Prominent figures have been referring to the Saturday attacks as Israel's 9-11, which should set off immediate alarm bells in everyone's head. The most significant thing that happened on September 11, 2001, was not the 3,000 deaths from the attacks themselves, but the dawn of an age of Western interventionism and military expansionism that would go on to kill orders of magnitude more people than died on 9-11. That's what you should think about when people begin comparing a new event to 9-11. Not to the event itself, but to the mountains of unwise decisions of far greater consequence that were made in its wake. That should be an automatic association in our minds. We should become more skeptical and oppositional toward the warmongering agendas of our government and its allies when we hear things compared to 9-11. Not less. It's hilarious that it's 2023 and people still think calling you a terrorist defender and an anti-Semite will stop you from criticizing the abuses of a nation which all leading human rights organizations have now labeled an apartheid state. I built a new house. There were people living there where I wanted to build it, so I just started building it on top of them. They tried to stop me, so I had to kill them for being terrorists. If you disagree with my actions, you're basically a Nazi. I have a right to defend my house. Following the discourse on all this has been a good reminder of why you shouldn't take the anti-war posturing of MAGA Republicans seriously. They're fully on board with a ton of warmongering agendas against Palestinians, Iran, China, and socialist governments in Latin America. They're just anti-Democrat wars. A nation that cannot exist without non-stop war is not a nation at all. It's an ongoing military operation. A nation that can't exist without non-stop war is like a house that can't stand without non-stop construction. If I lived in a house that was constantly full of construction workers and the sound of construction equipment 24-7, 365, because if they stopped working on it, it would collapse, eventually I'd figure I need to either A, 
change the kind of house I'm trying to build, or B, build somewhere else. <laughs>